The city of Trinidad in southern Cuba was built in the 18th century and soon became a wealthy trading town where sugar, tobacco and slaves were the main trade goods. Planters who made great fortunes competed with each other to see who could build the most elaborate houses in the town. The demand for sugar to add to tea and coffee grew greatly in 18th century Europe, and the valley of Ingenios, 14 kilometers northwest of Trinidad, supplied a large amount of that demand. The core labor force on the sugar plantations were slaves, forcibly brought over from West Africa. Slaves were treated harshly and often whips were used by the overseers to maintain discipline. Groups of slaves cut the tough sugarcane stalks with heavy machetes in the harsh Cuban heat. The cane was then put in the grinding mill and turned into liquid, which was then left out in the sun to crystallize. In order to be able to watch over the hundreds of slaves spread out over many acres of fields, planters had towers built on their plantations. From the top of this tower, which measures 44 meters in height, one has a clear view of 50 kilometers in all directions. In those days, resistance or rebellion by the slaves meant immediate death. The only freedom they were allowed were celebrations once a week. The slaves performed their traditional African dances and rituals. Their descendants continue to dance the same dances today in honor of their oppressed ancestors. The production of sugar has been partially suspended by the Cuban government in recent years because of the low prices on the world market. Many of the sugar fields have been converted into meadows and orchards. Only a few fields still grow sugarcane, as they have done for 300 years. <laughs>